the question all along with this new law in Arizona is, will the police do what the law says they're supposed to do? That is, only in the course of a regular interaction with someone. Yes. Do they look into whether or not they're here illegally? Or are they going to drive down the street and see a brown guy and demand papers? Well, they're doing some police training, and we're going to check in with William Lajeunesse uh, about how that's going. Coming up. This is the question. Sure, this is what Eric Holder was worried about the slippery slope on Sunday. We'll see how slippery the slope is coming up. You're listening to the Armstrong and Getty Show. Now, I was also to go and give a commencement speech in Arizona. But with my accent, I was worried they're going to deport me back to Austria. So I canceled that idea right away. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You're dead to me. You know, Arnold, I find that incredibly insulting, that joke. And I like your jokes generally, but I find that just so maddening. You're the freaking governor of the state of California. We're being invaded by another nation. One, you come out against another state trying to do anything about it. And two, make jokes about it. Because it's just funny, the whole, you know, we got... Uh, we're all, we're going broke. The hospitals, the schools. We can't we can't afford this. It's not working. The crime is up. It's a disaster. Somebody tries to do anything about it, you're against it, and then it's just it's just funny. It's just it just it really pisses me off. We're joined by William Lajeunesse of uh, Fox News, who is looking into the uh, training of police people down in Arizona to deal, deal with this new law. Now, William, my understanding of the law is if the Arizona police see anybody with a skin tone, skin tone darker than Nicole Kidman, they can immediately throw them to the ground, put a knee in their back, and tase them. Is that correct? Yeah, in fact, about, uh, well, 29 to 33% of the state, and in some counties, much more, all the people will be put on a bus this evening and sent out. Excellent. That's what I heard on MSNBC. Glad to hear it's true. So what is the reality? What have you learned? There's a lot of, obviously, as we know, there's a lot of misinformation, and some of it very purposeful in terms of the scare tactics of people saying about this law that isn't true. So we went on a ride-along with a Hispanic cop in a a largely Hispanic county south of Phoenix to see how he racially profiles people, right? So you're, it's 11 o'clock at night. You're sitting at the side of the road watching people go by and, and following people how they drive. Does he know what their race is? Obviously not. He's looking at their driving behavior. Then, even, and then they call in the plate number. They don't know what the hell they've got until they come up to the window. What do they ask for? You know what? doesn't matter what race they are. Registration, license, proof of insurance. Now, if, if, if they have that, and they have an Arizona license, it's presumed that they're there they're legally. If they present a border crossing card or a Mexican driver's license, then they're going to have some more questions. They're not immediately put in handcuffs. They're asked, more, do you have a visa? How long have you been living here? And they ask the question two or three times to find out if the person has a legal residence in the United States. Because even if you don't have a license, they will have you in the computer. The police computers um, have a lot of different information in them, as well as a uh, wants and warrants type of a check. So if you have a legitimate address, you're going to come up in, in, in the computer, even if you're not carrying, the, carrying your papers, man. So uh, what we found is in, in this particular county, which, which has basically two high-speed chases every day, and 100% really? of those... 100% of them are illegal immigrants. They have a couple high-speed chases a day in Two one of county. them a day. 64 last month. Wow. That's and, and, and they're all illegals. I'm not just talking about, this isn't, you know, your, 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 your random uh, meth freak. <clears throat> okay, they're all were illegal immigrants. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pass-through between Tucson and Phoenix. And, like, what's that's the population problem. of that county? Do you know? I think it was about 50,000. Yeah, it wouldn't be very much. Wow. No. Unbelievable. Two high-speed chases a day. William yeah. Lajeunesse of Fox and, News is on the line. And this is due. This is due. They, you know, like three years ago, the guy, the, the, the uh, sheriff saying, we didn't see this stuff. This is the same county where that cop got shot by the five illegals with the two AK-47. Well, so what's changed? What do the cops think has changed? Well, in the this drugs? particular county... In, this particular, in, in terms of how this law will be implemented, there is no change, okay? Now, in Phoenix... No, the, what brought about thing, the two, two high-speed chases and that sort of stuff that they didn't used to have? You said the cops didn't used to see that. What has changed? 
Well, what's changed is is the amount of drugs and the human smuggling is going through this area. Mm-hmm. I mean, meaning, like I seventeen has been. It, it has to do with the routes that these people are taking, but now they're coming through this particular county, whereas they were using other roads before. Mm-hmm. So to speak, because of enforcement in other areas, of course they're going to look for the you know the, the channel with the least resistance. But but what this cop was doing, who is by the way Lutino, he says, listen, if you can't answer these questions and you don't have a your address doesn't pop up in our computer and you don't have an Arizona license, he goes, I'm not going to deal with it. I'm just going to call. There's they're going to call INS or not ICE, excuse me. Right. They're going to call ICE. And they say, do you have this guy? Or they'll even put the immigrant on the phone with the, there's a law enforcement uh, support training, or law, law enforcement uh, support center, which is actually out, it's an ICE center in Vermont. And they will put the immigrant on the phone with this guy who speaks, obviously, fluent Spanish on the other end. And they will try to work out, is this dude here legally? And if he's not, they'll come and pick him up. Well, it's racism. William Lajeunesse of Fox News in Los Angeles. Uh, William, interesting stuff. Let's stay in touch on the uh, the training of the cops, okay? Okay. All right, okay. excellent job. Thank you very much. Maybe the speedometers are racist that are uh, recording those high-speed chases or the, uh, I don't know. Eric. Maybe the bullet uh, that shot that rancher was a racist bullet and just wanted to make Mexican people look bad. Eric Holder said the other day that he's against this law because it could lead to racial profiling and it's not something. Our, we have an immigration problem. That cannot be cured with a state-by-state solution. Of course, the federal government, right. uh, under George Bush or Barack Obama, had no interest in doing anything about it, so it's kind of a... How convenient. Yeah. Nobody's cleaning the house, but you tell your kid, listen, one of you cleaning the house isn't going to do any good. Look, I'm trying to do something. You know, now might be an appropriate time to... That uh, UCLA professor audio, Scott, this is, this is what a lot of it is really about. UCLA professor at rally. I want to start off by saying that the young man who spoke a little while ago was one of my students. And that made me so proud because I know that our people have strong leaders for years and years to come. This is an actual professor at UCLA. As a militante of Unión del Barrio, a revolutionary Mexican organization here, we understand what the camarada is saying. You're right, this is not just about Mexico. This is about a global struggle against imperialism and capitalism. Yes. But we know that all of that is happening in the context that where we now stand is stolen, occupied Mexico. Yeah. And the message that we bring is we want to bring a little bit of more of a, a revolutionary context to this. Why is it that these people, these frail, racist, white people, want to keep us out of this country? It's not because simply the color of our skin. It's not simply because they just want to exploit us. Let me tell you why. Because on this planet right now, a six billion people at the forefront of the revolutionary movement is the Raza. When you go to Venezuela... Now, according to Glenn Beck, he is currently a high school teacher down in uh, the L.A. area. Is that right? He's teaching a social studies class in a high school. How do you like that if you're teaching your kid? Nice. He's he's a Marxist, no-border, down-with-capitalism type. Very good. And who's going with the old, this land belongs to Mexico argument? Oy vey. You're kidding, right? (laughs) Because the government of Mexico is so glorious. Why wouldn't you want it to spread everywhere? Good Lord, you people are deluded. I wish we could do it as an experiment, just to, to prove something. Sure. Give however much of Arizona, New Mexico, and California you want to Mexico, move the border, mm-hmm. and see how it turns out over five, ten years. Yep. It's now going to be crap, like Mexico is crap. You're going to have corruption. You're going to have a bad economy. You're going to have drug killings. You're going to have crime. It's not the soil that causes the economic opportunity and the rule of law to exist on this side of the border. Nope. Obviously. Um, more on the way. You can call us anytime. 1-866-331-TALK. You're listening to the Armstrong and Getty Show.